Okay. So an equation, as we pointed out, the difference between that and an expression is that it uses an equal sign. Okay. That tells you what x is. Okay. For us, usually just one number. X is up being something. So for this, in this case, 2x equals 16, so x is equal to 8. Divide by 2, x is 8. Okay? Now, we did just learn that sometimes x can be all numbers or, you know, no numbers. But generally, x usually ends up being a number. Now, inequality, just like it's in the real world, if things aren't equal, Okay, someone has an advantage over someone else. This team has an advantage over this team. They're not equal. One team's better. One group is better. Whatever. That's inequality. Something's not equal. Okay, both sides don't have the same thing. So what we have here is these symbols. Now, what these symbols are, usually get Using, we'll talk about here in a little bit, but how to memorize it, we'll talk about here coming up. Now, if I said x is greater than 5, greater than 5, what could x be? Uh, six, seven, 6. What else? Seven, oh, be original. 98. Okay, 98. No? A billion. There you go, a billion. All right, so a lot. Any number that's bigger than five. Could it be five? Yeah. No, no it's not no, equal to. Five is not greater than itself. So the only way to do that would be if I had this symbol greater than or equal to five. Then five would be an okay answer. Because five is not greater than itself, but it is equal to itself. Okay, and that's the difference. This little line here means or equal we'll get to here. Now, when graphing inequality, we use a number line, a circle, and an arrow. Okay? An open circle, if it's greater than or less than. The number isn't part of the answer. We use a closed circle. Let's we'll write the word open, closed. If the symbol is greater than or less than, less than or equal, greater than or equal. Because the number is part of the answer. Okay, so arrow is to the left if the variable is less than a number, and arrow to the right if it is greater than the number. Make sure your variable is on the left. Now we talked about how you can solve a solid variable on the left or right side. When you're talking about inequalities, it saves a lot of confusion if you put your variable on the left side. It's not that you can't have it the other way, it just saves a lot of confusion. Now, this is on yours. So let's extend right here. That symbol right there. How do we read in English? Left to right or right to left? Right. Left to right. So since we read left to right, we can say 2 is less than 3. Correct? But could I also look at that and say 3 is greater than 2? Yes. Yes. You are not limited on which direction you read. Okay? You can read in either direction but you've got to read it properly, OK? 
okay? So two is less than three is the same thing as three is greater than two. Now, there are a lot of different ways to remember it, okay? You know, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, you know, the shark, the alligator, the alligator, whatever. The monster, whatever. It eats the bigger number. Okay? I know there's a child's way of doing it, but it's a way to remember it. It eats the bit larger number. So when you're reading it, and you're trying to remember which way it goes, the mouth eats the bigger number. Pac-Man eats the bigger number. Okay? Okay, so, graph, x is greater than 2. Okay, first off, what kind of dot is that going to be? Uh, open. open, so I wonder if I put an open dot right there to remind yourself of putting an open dot. Now, I don't care how you graph. Some people graph on the line. Some people graph above the line. It's usually easier to graph above the line. That way you don't have to like, really color it in to overshadow the line. So find the number two. Put a circle above it. Greater than two is to which side? Right. That's it. Less than two. Okay, what kind of dot? Open. So go back to two. Put an open dot, but this time we're going less than. And just think about it. It's a little bit of common sense. Is 8 less than 2? So why would you draw it to the right side? Okay. Is 0 less than 2? Yeah, so you draw it to the left side. Okay, greater than or equal. What kind of dot is that? Closed dot. So we find negative 3. Now, be careful. Some people think greater than negative 3, and they go, oh, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, because, you know, 4 is bigger than 3, and 5 is bigger than 3. But when we're talking about negative numbers, would you rather be in debt $3 or $17? 3. 3, because negative 3 is greater than negative 17. Okay? So greater than is going to go to the right. And the negative number screw you up, just find a bigger number, a positive number. So is 7 greater than negative 3? Yes. So you go that direction. Just pick a number on the number line, test it. And then consequently on this one, we're going to use a solid dot again. We're going to use negative 3 again. But since it says, now look at this. It's backwards, very good. But we can read backwards. So we can rewrite this if we wanted to, if it makes more sense to us, like this. So remember how we said always keep the variable on the left? It doesn't have to be. But when you look at this, okay, and here's the other thing. People go, oh, this greater than symbol, the arrow is pointing to the right, so I should just shade to the right. Hmm, no. That, this is not the guide. Which way the arrow is pointing, that is not the guide. This proves it. Because if I went to the right, I would be saying x is greater than negative 3. And we want less than negative 3. So don't just follow the inequality symbol as an arrow pointing you in the right direction. It's not always pointing you in the right direction. Now, if your variable is on the left side, it's pointing you in the right direction. Which is why we said do that. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay, now, a few things to think about here. These are some rules. I'm not going to read those to you. Um, but basically, it's like solving equations. Whatever you add to one side, you add to the other. Whatever you subtract from one side, you subtract to the other. Nothing's different here. Okay, there's no difference. So, for, if this was just x minus 3 equals 5, I want to get x by itself. What do I do? Plus 3. Plus 3 on both sides. Very good. But now, instead of saying x equals 8, I'm going to say x is less than 8. Now, when it says graph, here's all I want from you. 
just give me the number eight, give me an open dot, and go that way. I don't need all the numbers. That's enough. You don't need to give me a full on number line. If I don't provide a number line for you, that's good enough. Cool? Okay, if this was x plus 6 equals 10, what would I do? Subtract 6. So I'm going to do the same thing. Except instead of being x equals 4, x is greater than or equal to 4. Real quickly, I just draw a number line, an arrow, I put 4, I put an open dot, greater than or equal is that, I mean, sorry, a closed dot. I said open, but you were closed. And go right. Now, why is number say number say number three say be careful? Why is number three say be careful? Yes, sir. Because the end where? It's not in the middle. It's on the right. It's on the right of the symbol, right? Make sense? And if it's on the right of the symbol, that's when the direction of the arrow is lying to you. Now, do we want to move the end to the left side? No, because that would give us a negative end, and that, we don't want that. So I'm still going to add 4 to both sides, which gives me negative 2 is greater than n. Or how can I rewrite this? n is less than negative 2, correct? See how the arrow's pointing at n? Yes, sir. That's supposed to be a positive. Like I said, how's it do? I was just seeing if you were paying attention. I don't make mistakes. I just throw a, thing, throw a little challenges out there. Yeah, thank you. Positive 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. So, 2 is greater than n, which means n is less than 2. Again, I just need a number. It's going to be an open dot, and it's that way. It's not following the direction of the arrow if it says 2 is greater than n. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier. And you want to definitely, with inequalities, keep your variable positive. So although some of you might want to move the 4 over, move the 3. And you'll see in a second when we get the multiplication division why. This gives me 6 is less than A. Now, at this point, if you want to, go ahead and just rewrite it with this on the right side. But remember, isn't the mouth eating the A? So the mouth is eating the A this way. So when you rewrite it, just keep the mouth facing the same direction. Keep the arrow towards the number, however you want to remember it. And then, real quickly, line, put the number 6, open dot, greater than. Now this one works out nicely, so I'm getting it on the left side. X is less than or equal to 12, I'm done. Nothing to think about here. Put the number 12, that's going to be a solid dot, less than or equal goes that direction. slides. Okay, solve the equalities like equation except, now here's the big thing, and you can't stress this enough, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the symbol. This is the huge, huge rule with inequalities. Everything so far we've done just like an equation. Add, subtract, both sides. Multiplication division, same thing. Divide by 2, divide by 3, no problem. Multiply by 5, multiply by 5, no problem. But if we multiply by negative 3, or we divide by negative 7, we must flip the symbol. So, look at these four. They look almost exactly the same. Okay? We have 2x is greater than 8. We're just going to divide by 2, just like we would if it was an equal sign. 
No big deal. And we get x is greater than 4. We're not going to graph all these. That's our answer. Now, here's the problem. Once people learn a rule in math, they usually want to overuse it. So I just told you, if you multiply or divide by negative, flip the symbol. And as soon as that happened, you know, five minutes ago, everyone here would have gone, oh, divide by two. Divide by two. X is greater than negative four. No big deal. Okay? Five minutes ago, I bet you most of you, if not all of you, would have given me that answer. But some of you, now that you've heard this new rule, hey, if there's a negative, uh, do I flip a symbol? No. Just seeing a negative number does not mean flipping a symbol. Adding or subtracting a negative does not mean flipping a symbol. It's only when you what or what? Multiply or divide with a negative. That's it. So, no, this answer is not x is less than negative 4. It states x is greater than negative 4. Nothing has changed. Okay? Because all we did was divide by a positive number. Now, here's the new rule. I just divided by a negative 2. These cancel, giving me x. Positive divided by negative is negative 4. But since I divided by a negative number, this is not going to be x is greater than negative 4. It ends up being x is less than negative 4. Same thing on this one. I divide by negative 2. These cancel. This gives me x. This gives me positive 4. Negative divided by negative. But my answer is not x is greater than. It's x is less than. So these two right here, you flip them. You flip the inequality symbol. You change direction because I divided by a negative. All right. Number five. What's happening to the A? It's being divided by three. How do you undo division? We multiply. So this is nothing new. I multiply by three, I multiply by three. My threes cancel. That gives me A. This gives me 12. Since I didn't do anything special, this is going to stay greater than or equal. A is greater than or equal to 12. 12, 17, 1 billion. Number 6, my X is being divided by a negative number. Ooh. I need to multiply it by negative 4. At that point, alarm should go off on my head. Alert, 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 alert. This is that special rule. X is X, because I seem to be having trouble drawing. 10 times negative 4 is negative 40. No big deal. But I must flip the symbol because I multiply by a negative number. Now, seven, we talked about this yesterday. We have a fraction in front of our variable, three-fourths. Three-fourths being multiplied by the x. So technically, we should divide by three-fourths, but we don't divide by fractions in algebra. So instead of dividing by a fraction, we're going to multiply by four over three. Four over three. That makes the 4s cancel and the 3s cancel minus get x. We talked yesterday about how to multiply by fractions. You have two choices. You can do 15 times 4, which is 60, divided by 3, which is 20, or smaller numbers. 3 goes into 15 5 times, and 5 times 4 is 20. It makes no difference how you deal with it. Now, since I multiply by a positive number, a positive fraction, this does not change. So remember, 15 has 4 is 60, divided by 3 is 20. Or 3 goes into 15 5 times, and 5 has 4 is 20. Doesn't matter which way you do, however your brain handles it is the best way. 
On this one, I have a fraction that's negative, so I have to multiply by a fraction that's negative. The reciprocal, negative 5 halves. Here, the 5's cancel, the 2's cancel, and the negatives cancel, making it positive. So I'm just left with x. Over here, 5 times 20 is 100, divided by 2 is 50. Over, 2 goes into 20 10 times, times 5 is 50. But remember, 5 times a negative gives me negative 50. And since I multiply by a negative number, this greater than symbol must become a less than symbol, and I flip this one also. Okay, word problems. Again, with the screw up in the printing, you're not going to get any on the practice day, but let's just practice them now. Okay? So we already talked about this, but this is, is less than. This is, is greater than. Is less than or equal to is greater than or equal to. So let's do the translation of these. Okay? It says the sum. As soon as you see the word sum, I gave you a sheet that sheet that has the words on it. Sum means plus. Sum means add. So you know you're gonna be writing an addition problem. If you want to write the plus sign right now, go ahead. The sum of a number, usually we just use a letter, most people use X, and seven is at least 42. Now, here's the problem. People see that word least, and what do they usually think? Less than, right? Least, less, that makes sense. And it does, I understand it. But think about what's actually happening. I want at least 42. Is 40 okay? No, no. No. I want at least 42. Is 45 okay? Yes. Yes. So is 45 greater than or less than? So I want this to be greater than or equal to 42. That is one of the biggest problems with inequality is word problems. People will see words, and it makes sense. I understand it. You see least, you hear you think of less, it makes sense. But you got to think about what's actually happening. I want at least this much, which means I want this or more. And that's the tricky part. Now we're just going to solve. So what do we do to both sides? Subtract 7. So x has to be greater than or equal to 35. 42 minus 7. Number two, twice a number, okay? So twice a number, that means multiplication. Put a little dot there. I don't put an X because we don't use an X for times now that we're, you know, we're all grown up, big kids now. So a dot means times. Because an X is the variable. So twice a number, and again, that's just going to be X, is less than that number minus five, which is obviously minus is minus. So Two times the number is less than, and that just comes right out of the chart, that number minus 5. Okay? If I want to get x by itself, or minus x, that's going to give me x is less than minus 5. Now we're going to do a bonus one right here. So just kind of squeeze it in. Write number three. Just say the number is at most 50. The number is at most 50. Now, you hear the word most, you think what? More, right? 
most, more, greater than. But remember, the number can be at most 50. That's the top end. If I say the most people allowed in this room somewhere is 50, can I have 55? No. No. So I don't want greater than 50. Very good. I want less than or equal to 50. And it's very good you threw that in there. It's not just less than 50. At most means I can have 50. 50 is okay. I just can't have 51. I can have 17, 38, not 53. 